Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in southwest Scotland for a Robocons hunt with Chris Dalton and trusty Weimaraner Oscar. Plus, it's an Italian job. Wes Stanton visits Solly for a custom class. It's early morning in southwest Scotland and Chris Dalton is already in action. The landowner has called on him for a forestry protection mission. A new plantation is being hit hard by Roe and Chris is the man to sort it out. This will be a job for the legendary man and dog team. Oscar is set for another star turn in this store. Meanwhile, Chris preps the Merkel RX Helix. The rifle's switch barrel function allows him to choose the right calibre for the job and he's selected a 243 on this occasion. Gear ready with initial spy complete, the pair stalk on. We're out, it's just turned four o'clock. Uh, we're going up to a quarry area uh, with a plantation at the back of it where there's been a little bit of damage and framed by the bugs. So the estate manager spoke to me yesterday and I thought we'd better come down and just have a look. So the plan is we're going to walk up nice and quietly up here. Well, the dog's already starting to pick some indication of scent up. Could well be dear laid up at this time in the morning, but we'll get laid up somewhere if the midges don't eat us alive. And just see if we get any movement this morning. We progress towards the chosen location. Chris is stalking with care and professionalism, stopping to glass through the Schwarzky binoculars regularly, but all is quiet in the early stages of this stalk. As the light comes up, the local wildlife begins to emerge. Oscar indicates there may be something ahead. We can't get eyes on anything yet, but Chris heeds the dog's signal and stalks on ever carefully. We gain altitude and stalk the estate until the sea comes into view on the other side. There is still no deer, but we've come up against another adversary, the classic Scottish midge. Braving the infestation as best we can, we spot our first deer of the day, but it's a red, and this one will be left until later in the year. As we stalk round for a better look, our chosen quarry finally comes into view. In a twist of fate, it's browsing along a track Chris stalked up just minutes ago. We make the most of our height advantage, advancing towards the book as quickly as we can, but it isn't hanging around. We get to a vantage point just in time to see it disappear. With the midges threatening to eat us alive, we call it a blank. A little bit frustrating, in fact very frustrating actually. We've seen several deer, we've seen a really uh, good quality stag, uh, which was probably stalkable and shootable had we been taking a stag, which we weren't. Very midgy this morning, uh, the Scottish midges sort of got the better of us I think. The area that we wanted to wait and lie up in, which was a good vantage point, we just simply couldn't tolerate the midges so we had to keep moving, which was quite difficult. Uh, one shootable buck, which was just up the top of the track here, which was quite interesting because it followed the route that we'd taken, although beat about 20 minutes later. We were going to again wait for him to come around, but he just, just couldn't tolerate the midge, so we've stalked along. Um, we'll try a different estate tonight, um, similar sort of situation. Uh, Tony's coming out with us, uh, so we'll see if we have a little bit of better look down there and hopefully the breeze gets up and shifts these damn midges. Absolutely. For the next stalk, Chris is pulling out all the stops. Not only has he drafted in stalking partner Tony, he's also pulled Stuart Wilson out from behind the camera and put a rifle in his hand. Chris lays out the plan of attack. Okay guys, well we've, uh, the, the, the keeper's been on to us about the plantation just at the back of us. I mean Tony knows the area well so he's yeah. going to take you in Stuart. And there's a high seat just in the trees there. Um, there's been a couple of young bucks seen in that area so we'll probably do with one or two of those shooting yeah. if you get the chance. Tony's going to work around the back edge 
um, and come along the plantation side and then we'll all meet back at the RV at sort of quarter to ten. We'll not yeah. leave it too late tonight because I think the, the you know the weather's going to sort of come in fairly quickly. Um, probably the ideal animal we'd like to take the young culverts. Yeah. I said Tony will brief you when we get onto the edge. Yeah. And uh, the one plus point this evening is, although it's raining, is I don't think we're going to get too bothered with the midges. And with that, we're off. Chris drives to his chosen location while Tony and Stuart head for the high seats. Stuart is in position first. With rifle and ammo at the ready, Stuart's ready for the vigil to begin. Conditions aren't perfect, but he remains hopeful. Just nicely gone into the into the high seat and, and uh, a doze bounced through and, and across the bracken. I imagine that'll be from Tony going around sort of far side, he's going to stalk up the far side. There's quite a few trees obscure in my view uh, from this high seat, but I think I've got enough gaps to shoot through if there's anything in the area. So. Um, fingers crossed, we'll we'll get one, and we'll be able to get him get him in the gap. But his hopes are all for nothing, as another blank is on the cards. With no row in sight, he's left watching some of the estate's smaller fauna. Just our luck. We catch up with Chris for a final morning stalk. It's our last chance, but conditions are poorer than ever. With thick mist drastically reducing visibility, Chris gambles that it will lift and stalks out towards the sea once more. Immediately Oscar shows interest. Spying downhill and towards the sea, we spot a roebuck browsing on the edge of the plantation. It's the destructive culprit caught red-handed, but a shot just isn't on. With a fence in the way and a road somewhere behind the buck, Chris has to pass this one up for now. Hopeful of catching up with this buck later on, we stalk up to the plantation. And it's not long before we spot another buck. In thick foliage, barely a hundred yards away, Chris is straight onto the sticks. This looks like a perfect cull bow. There's a lot of greenery in front of the deer, but as it takes a step forwards, Chris gets the opportunity he needs. The book runs on, but we see it drop just yards from the shot strike. It's a job well done, but retrieval could be tricky in the thick cover. This is where a trained hound can come into its own. But Oscar thinks it's too easy and lets Chris take the lead. It turns out this dog does think the work should be shared after all. We had a good morning really. I mean, the weather's awful. A little bit of a lull there for us, which, which sort of helped. We're not a really nice book there, which the shot wasn't safe. No. Um, we've got the, <laughs> a busy road running down below us and we've got the Irish ferry coming in. Um, I don't think they'd have appreciated a shot across the bows. If it had come 10 metres forward over the fence, we've got a lovely backstop. As it was, we've got, this is the one I would prefer to take anyway. Um, nice little cull book. Oscar's lost his fan club now. He didn't <coughs> like thorns, so uh, we had to search for the deer while he kind of followed in the track that I was making through the thorns. So thanks for that, Oscar. It was a good morning in pretty poor weather conditions, so we'll do a quick suspended grill on the fence on this one and we'll, uh, we'll get back and have a breakfast, I think. So yeah. the 243's done the job. A good, uh, good gecko. Yeah, very good ammunition. Nice and nice and clean. It's a, it's a good, good combination. It works well with the rifle. A swift Gralic follows, and Chris soon has the deer in the apex predator row sack, ready to transport back to the larder. On the third time of asking, we've finally got our bug. As always when the camera's around, it's never, never easy. Yesterday morning, um, weather conditions a bit against us. It was very still, very calm and very humid, which I'm afraid at this time of year in the southwest of Scotland means the midge was out. The plan really was to go to a quarry area where we've had a lot of damage being done by a couple of young bucks. There's several bucks in the quarry actually at various times, two nice bucks. So we're actually out to try and shoot one of the cold bucks and the intention was to sit. Unfortunately, the midge got the better of us. This morning we were, we were out again and I'm afraid the weather was against us again. Uh, misty conditions. I'm not actually sure at four o'clock this morning whether we'd been able to get out of the vehicle it was that bad. But anyway, it did actually lift. Continued off down to an area we call the jungle and you'll probably see from the footage why. Um, we were actually monitoring for quite a while a decent buck on the corner of the plantation. But as we were moving to try and get into a better position, the little buck had just got up and stood up in the bracken below us in the thorn. Um, so actually ideally that's the one I wanted to shoot, so we took him 
I did a little bit of a follow-up again. He ran. He only ran about 20 metres. Um, but Oscar, my dog, uh, super hound, doesn't like thorns and doesn't like nettles. So I'm afraid it was the cameraman and I trying to search this uh, this thicket. I spent more time on my arse than I did on my feet. We did eventually find it. Um, so that's sort of the results of, of three stokes, really. And it can just show you how, how weather can sometimes impact, and then other times when you think it's not going to, you're not going to do anything, you actually have quite a good morning. Chris and Oscar there, proving that a deer dog partnership really does work. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, with the CLA Game Fair now less than four weeks away. The Shooting Show got to see behind the scenes at the Seiko factory in Finland. Seiko officials gave us an insight into what goes into the Seiko 85 and Tika T3 rifles, plus Seiko ammunition. But the biggest news from the tour was the new Seiko A7 with rough tech stock. It's very similar to the, the standard A7 which we have currently. There's a two-piece bolt with three locking lugs. But the difference in this rifle, it comes with a mid-weight barrel, which is fluted, uh, and it comes with a new uh, synthetic stock. The synthetic stock is different because it has a fully bedded aluminium subframe built into the stock, which gives it additional strength. The finish of the stock itself is uh, a drizzle or a, a spider's web, uh, which gives excellent durability, but also is very tactile in bad weather. It's available in two models. We have the Roughtech Pro, which is the standard hunting model, which comes in this blue-black colour, but also a desert tan. And then we have the range model, which again comes in black or green, and has yeah. a varmint barrel or a heavy barrel for uh, some long-range shooting or your target shooting. It, the expected delivery is within the next month for the Pro model in the blue-black uh, synthetic stock. The desert tan will follow shortly after and the range will be available approximately from August. Clay shooters at the CLA Game Fair will be competing on a level playing field with George Digweed and Richard Folds. The clay competitions at the fair will all use specially made 28 gram Uni Olympics cartridges. This mirrors stellar tournaments such as the Nadal Sheba Championships in Dubai where all competitors use the same cartridges. Peter Wilson said the competition was set to be very exciting and unique. Northern Ireland's Justice Committee has called for an urgent rethink of proposals to increase firearms licensing fees. The Department of Justice plans to increase the individual licence fee to £100, with a further cost review in 18 months' time. But in a stormant debate on Wednesday, Justice Committee Chairman Paul Given said he would not sign up to an interim fee and that a working group should be set up to examine the issue properly. Basque's Tommy Main said the organisation was very grateful for the intervention and that Basque would strive to ensure an efficient level of service at a fair price. The Crown Prosecution Service is consulting antis before carrying out prosecutions. Three members of the Devon and Somerset Staghounds have been told that the CPS will consult the League Against Cruel Sports before deciding whether to pursue a case. The Countryside Alliance has written to the Attorney General about the case. Director of Campaigns Tim Bonner said relying on the evidence of lax is quite disgraceful and can only lead to further abuse of the criminal justice system. And finally, we might be building up to the CLA Game Fair 2014, but the location of the 2015 fair has just been announced. Harewood House in Leeds will host the fair next year. It's the first time the fair has headed up north since 2003. The planned Game Fair at Harewood in 2007 was cancelled owing to extreme weather conditions. Helen Woolley, the CLA's Director General, said she was delighted that the fair was coming to Harewood for a sixth time. That was the Shooting Show News. I think it's fair to say that we journalists have a really rough ride from those people who enjoy shooting as a hobby. They think that all we do is spend all our time on jollies, going shooting, drinking fine wine, with the great and good of the international gun trade. Nothing could be further from the truth. Most of us spend their days glued, metaphorically glued, well, in some cases, literally glued to an Apple Macintosh, and having a really tough time of it. Fortunately, I was able to escape the clutches of the office. I was privileged to go around the Antonio Zoli factory in Italy to see how their guns are made, and more importantly, from my point of view, have a custom stock made for myself. Behind the scenes at Zolli HQ in Brescia, 
company president Paolo Zoli met me for a tour of the factory, giving me a deeper insight into how their excellent competition guns are made. Computer-aided design and manufacturing helps the Zoli team plan new models and developments, but there's a lot of work done by hand too. Here I got a sneak preview of an innovative rib design for 2014. Then it was time to see how my gun was coming along. With the action assembled, what started as a large lump of steel is beginning to resemble a Zolli shotgun. After some final adjustments to the trigger, all it needs now is a well-crafted custom stock. And so these are, it starts off as just a piece about so big. Mm. And then, and then they, they roughly cut out where the, where the action is going to go there. And the customer selects his piece of wood. I was soon introduced to Zolly's Trigun. As Triguns go, it's not the most high tech. It's just an action and barrels attached to a stock that would suit Mr. Average. But this is where Zolly's expertise really shines through. Just from seeing me mount the gun, the stock maker was able to determine the exact measurements to cut the wood to. Zolly doesn't do custom stocks on a large scale. It uses a specialist custom stock maker who crafts them by hand. So if you want one, you have to come all the way to Italy to get one. Seeing as I was already here, I couldn't possibly turn down the opportunity. In the space of just a day, Zolly had taken that block of wood and transformed it into a stock. Now for the moment of truth. Have they got it right? Yes, slightly. Eighth of an inch, tiny. The test stock was slightly too long for me because the trigger finger was in the wrong place. We're going to take off five or six mil, which is somewhere around a quarter of an inch in old money, just to make sure my finger's in exactly the right place. This is a true precision job, with every dimension of the stock made to fit the individual shooter. Before I knew it, my stock was back, now very slightly shorter than before. This time, the hand position felt perfect, and the stock came to the shoulder beautifully. And with the engraving in place, my expertly crafted Zolli Z Sport was finally complete. And here is the finished item, the finished stock itself, made in a beautiful exhibition grade walnut. And this is very much a top of the range competition shotgun. The technically astute of you will notice that this is a Monte Carlo comb. The advantage for me is that if I make a mistake when mounting the gun, I've got a bit of latitude about exactly where I put my head. Um, on the stock, so it gives me the consistent sight picture, which uh, I'm shooting Olympic skeet or fit us go, can make all the difference. And one of the beauties of such a low profile action is that there's less muzzle flip, less perceived recoil, which if you're shooting a lot of cartridges in a day at sporting, skeet, or even trap, then the fatigue to the shooter is much reduced. Now it's true to say that the Zolli brand uh, has been around for years in the UK. Zolli's always made competition shotguns that are high quality, Edgar Brothers have invested heavily in marketing and promoting Zolli. They're not afraid to invest when they believe in a brand. And this year, not only are they sponsoring our clay shooting classic, but they've also helped us resurrect the clay shooting classic Fit Ask, which is to be on the 24th to 27th of July. Zolli are the main sponsor from the trade. Uh, if Fit Ask is your thing, I really hope to see you there at Westfields, 24th to 27th of July. Well that's it for this week, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.